Uh, so hello, my name is Lisa and I'm over from Dublin, so I'm a little bit sleepy because I only got in at midnight last night. Um, so I work for Demonware, um, so because I'm giving two talks, I'll just speak briefly about what Demonware do, just so you have some context. Maybe I won't. So I'm going to talk uh, firstly about um, what I would think is a traditional use of EZBI, so helping to identify sticking points in product releases. Um, so before that, I'll just talk about what Demonware does, uh, the problem we were trying to solve, because um, the graphs that I show you are some of the first things that we used EZBI for in the company, and then um, the solution, so like the reports that we actually came up with and what we used them for. Uh, so Demonware uh, have offices in Dublin, Shanghai and Vancouver and we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Activision uh, which are part of the Activision Blizzard and King group. So if you play Call of Duty or World of Warcraft or Candy Crush on your phone, um, that's, that's who we are. So we mainly focus on the Call of Duty side of things, so games like Call of Duty, Skylanders, um, Guitar Hero back in the past. Um, so our big one for 2017 would be Call of Duty coming out, the World War II one. So on the uh, development side of things, we use a uh, wide range of software. I think I don't think I'd be able to fit all the icons on the one screen, um, but they're not too relevant for this talk anyway. Uh, on the project management, on the project management side, uh, we use Jira and Confluence quite heavily. All of our reports to um, our other departments, to leadership and to Activision themselves, would be in Confluence. All our uh, development teams, IT. HR, everyone uses Jira. Uh, we use Google Apps then as well. So we have a couple of um, Google Sheets integrations to EasyBI also. And then we use Zendesk um, for customer service, but we are going to switch to Service Desk soon as it's better and integrates obviously better with Confluence and EasyBI also. And then for continuous integration, we use Bamboo, but we're moving to Jenkins soon. Uh, and so just some of the services that we provide, uh, just to explain who the graphs are for that I'm going to show. Um, so the team that I made these reports for are in charge of a web application to allow Activision Studios to access uh, the following services uh, through the human rights. So it's basically like a web portal and it was a 10 or it's about 13 or 14 years old. So it was about 10 years old when I started working in Demonware. So it was a large old code base that not a lot of people knew about. So it was very hard for people to uh, come on to the team and estimate work or even figure out like what they were going to do because uh, it's such a huge application and um, they were so unfamiliar with it. So just some quick uh, numbers because people usually love them. Uh, so we service over 500 million players. Uh, we have actually nearly doubled that now registered on our on our servers. We have fi uh, five, 500,000 servers. We have one title launched in Amazon Cloud Services now as well. A Skylanders title, um, just to show the, the volume of work that we, we do each year. I'm not very good with a clicker. Um, so the problems that we were trying to solve. So we used to do sprints on this team, but as I mentioned, the code base was so uh, old and complicated that it was very hard for people to estimate work. So the sprints were quite demoralizing because we'd pick maybe five or six stories and not get them done because they would turn out to be a lot more involved than we realised. Uh, it was a remote team as well and it was an immature team that was just being built up. So there was one engineer in Dublin initially and then um, around half a dozen in Ukraine. So there was people working remotely, there was new people, there was the Ukrainian people were external contractors. So there was a lot of uh, unfamiliarity and um, trying try to get a good work process going and it was just taking us a long time. So we wanted to be able to quickly identify problem user stories and problem bugs uh, to try and improve our workflows. Um, the team need in Dublin was the final a reviewer for all work, so it meant that like stories would get stuck in review. Um, initially, so that's not the case anymore, but initially when we put this team together we wanted to have one stopgap before things got to production. But we wanted to make sure also that that wasn't, um, a st wasn't too much of a sticking point because reviewing all the work for almost seven engineers can, be, uh, can take a lot of time, obviously. 
We also had a lot of uh, work requests from different sources, so we would have tickets in from our external customers in Zendesk, so that's other Activision Studios would be our customers, but then also internal users in Demon would come across problems and report them to us, so we'd have lots of different tickets coming in, so there's a high volume of tickets, and on top of all the development work that we're trying to do, we have a lot of support. Uh, so, EDVI obviously didn't solve all those problems, but it helped us to quickly identify them so that we could talk about them in meetings and get conversations going in retrospect. Um, so we looked at the items that we wanted to discuss. So it's kind of what I said in the last slide, like take things that are getting stuck in review, um, how much work are we getting through a week, are we happy with that, uh, how much work are we getting done in a release, are we getting better at estimating our work over time. Um, so also something that I found in a new team is that if you have retrospectives on your release or your sprint, people often won't talk like because they don't know each other or they're shy or they're not confident enough to get their point across even if they have a problem. So if they have something that they can just point at on the screen and say, well, look at this, I'm not happy with it, it gets the conversation going a lot better. Um, so this is one of the basic, I think this is pretty much just the out of the box to uh, issues created and resolved report, but just for the last 10 weeks. So you can, I noticed they closed a lot of tickets one day. <laughs> um, but it's just to show uh, how many tickets were being added to the backlog and resolved um, on a weekly basis. So you can see that it's, for a small team, there's quite a high volume, so mix. there's uh, 25 tickets added, 40 tickets added and so on. So did you get a, a high volume of tickets in? So that's just a good talking point, say in retrospect, is for the team need to show the product owner. It's like, look, look how busy we are, basically. Um, and on my other point on, on that it was hard to estimate tasks, so at the, when we, were, we would do a release retrospective, so we weren't doing sprint retrospectives because we were uh, using Kanban, uh, we would click in if there was, a, we would drill down if there was an outlier to see what the, um, to see what the problem tickets was. So say for release 3.2 there, we would click into the 266 to see the two or three stories that took a lot longer than we thought they than, than we had expected, and we'd see, we would see why that was, and we'd talk about it, and then we'd make action points to try and stop that happening again. So you can see, um, for example, release 3.0 was a major version release, so uh, there was a lot of small tickets in there that were estimated at, say, a day or two days that were actually uh, took two or three hours, like there were very quick fixes to do, so that's why there was such a, a big drop between our estimates and our hours spent. And this is to show um, where our blockers are on our workflow. So how much time did each story or bulk spend in progress, in review, or in testing? So this, is, it's, this isn't useful like as you're looking at your bo um, board day to day or in your stand-up, but it's, again, it's for your retrospective to show how much time did something spend in a status. So this is the average days and transition status measure in EasyBI. So it's just to show, so there was a lot of people on holidays actually, so we were on weekly releases towards the right hand of the graph and there was a lot of people on holidays for two weeks so things took a lot longer to get, um, to get reviewed and tested basically. So it can be something as simple as that or sometimes um, when it's validation it helps us identify problems with our testing environment or if something's stuck in progress it could be that we need something from another team and it, it shows that that was a blocker and we, again, we talk about that in the retrospective to try and stop it happening again. So for when we're not in our retrospective, when we're um, looking at our, at our EasyBI dashboard day to day, this is a very useful board. So I, I had to grey out the story names, but you get the idea. Um, so to show when issues are stuck in status, uh, for say me as a project manager or the team need to follow up on. Uh, either with the person who was working on it or with another team. So you can see um, there's, there's two or three that are absolutely huge. So there's one um, at the bottom, it's setting up our Jenkins instance in AWS. So we're only moving to Jenkins soon. So we've been testing that for a while and it's quite low priority. So the ticket's just been hanging around for a long time. So that's not necessarily a big problem, but in some of the other cases, it's that um, we're waiting on something from another team or we're blocked on something or we weren't able to test it. Um, but it, it's just for us to look um, on a weekly, on a reg more regular basis than at the end of a, a release 
to look like daily or every few days on what we're blocked on and how we can unblock tickets. So I picked a particularly bad one so that there was a lot of red. <coughs> and so a few other things that we, I didn't want to put up too many graphs because I had so many, but a few other things that we looked at just to highlight wins to the teams. Uh, it's good to show how the, how the backlog is changing over time, like our, our team seemed to like that. So if we had like a thousand hours of work that next week we only had 950, even though we added more tickets, there was a lot of work done and so on. Um, our average resolution time was very poor when we started because, uh, because it was a new team but an old product. There was a lot of old GR tickets that were hanging around for a few years just because there was no one, or there was few, fewer people actively maintaining the product. So it was good to see a graph with our average resolution time on tickets um, improving over time. Uh, it was great that the figures were easy to understand and that the uh, reports are very clear and that you can put a text field at the top to explain what the person is looking at so that it doesn't matter if it's an engineer or a product owner or a team lead or someone on the leadership team looking at it, that it's very, um, it's just very, it's very clear, like you can make the, you can remove columns and remove rows to make the reports as simple as you want. We found that very useful. Um, two or three other uh, quick wins that we used to look at in the retrospectives were how many tickets were in the backlog in general, just to see it getting smaller because it was such an old product that we have a nice groomed product backlog now, it's, it's glorious. And um, an interesting thing that our quality team wanted to see was how many bugs were uh, fixed in each release versus how many bugs were identified in each release. So we had a new custom field of type fix version to show when bugs were introduced and we could compare like um, how many bugs we had cleared versus how many problems we'd introduced. Now th thankfully it isn't very many, but it was, um, we, we found things like that very useful. So this is what, so we first made these reports um, three and a half or maybe th three years ago and the team still used them and we found them uh, just ter like terribly useful, so easy to understand and we've, our use of EasyBI have, has gotten a lot more complex over time but this is one of the first things we use it for and it's one of the most useful, so I just wanted to show it to everyone today. Um, so that's it, I keep, I keep pointing the screen. <laughs> so in summary, uh, EasyBI can highlight the problems to you, but it obviously it can't solve them for you, but we found it very useful for us. So that's it. If anyone has any questions, this is quite an easy use case, I feel a bit silly after the last presentation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I, I had a question. So, uh, do, do you see, um, well, by by theory, so when you work for some longer time, your uh, team should get better in estimating, and uh, so the velocity should be more or less stable. So, uh, as I see that you still have some of these fluctuations, or release or release. Yeah. So, do you see that uh, when people are seeing uh, these charts, does it improve, get better in estimating, and be more pessimistic, maybe about what could be done? Uh, Release. Yeah, so the, so the graphs that I had shown were just from the last like eight or nine releases, but we have like 60 or 70 releases, and so the gap between original estimate and time spent used to be huge, and now it's always very small. So the only outlier was the one, uh, the major release had a, had a big gap, but otherwise we've gotten much better over time. And the other graph that I showed for the sticking points to show that there was tasks stuck in review and in progress, that also used to be, like the bars on that graph used to be huge and now it's, they're quite small. So even though there's, there's variance, if, if I showed the graph for like two years, it's much better, it's brilliant. I should have done that. <laughs> that, that that's great. Um, so any other questions? Hi, do you see us, yourself evolving to the point where you use the data to do your estimates versus um, using people to do the estimates? Um, some other teams have been looking at that, but because this uh, product in particular has so many components to it, it wouldn't really be suitable. So one or two other teams in Gmailware have looked at that, but so they will um, they will use the, they do it quite complicated actually, so they will see how long specific engineers take on different tasks and then say it usually takes John X days to do this, so it will take him Y days to do this other task. So they will they will do that. So they'll have a graph like I had but broken down by a signee and the, the team lead will look at it then and then just do the do the estimates. But we don't like automatically populate an estimate field based on that. 
So we do, and other teams use it to guide estimates. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, then thank you very much.